I'm working on stairs now and I'm cutting out my risers and my treads. And one of the challenges with, with stairs, as with any finished carpentry really, is that everything's not perfectly square, especially in this house. So, you know, you want your, your risers and your treads to have a nice fit and finish and not have big gangly looking gaps and stuff on them. So, I've built a jig here that, you know, to adjust out and in and adjust it this way. And it's gonna allow me to uh, get the, the proper and precise measurement of the risers and treads. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how this works and then I'm gonna show you how to build it. So let's measure a riser. All we're really gonna do is take this jig, lay it into place where the riser's gonna go, adjust it out, I'll adjust this side, and I'll take this one and bring it all the way out find the, the proper angle here. Go ahead and oops, go ahead and tighten it up. Okay. Now all I got to do is take this jig out, go lay it on the riser, mark my line, and then adjust my miter saw and cut out the cut out the finished piece. So let's go do that. Okay, let's lay our jig out. I've marked the jig uh, bottom, front, top, back on both sides. So that way I'll know, you know, which part of this riser is bottom and top when I go to cut it out and then take it up and put it in. So I'm just gonna lay, lay the jig on here. Kind of get it lined up really good. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mark my line. Right there. I'll mark it here. And I'll just take this over to the miter saw and cut it out. Okay, so now I will just adjust my miter saw until I find the angle just perfect that looks like it's it then I'll cut it all right we have a riser cut out let's see how it fits think it could fit any more perfecter. So let's get this uh, glued and nailed into place and then we'll cut out the tread. Okay, I've got some adhesive on the back of the riser. I'm just gonna run some nails in here, kinda low where you won't see it once the tread's put in. piece of code molding through here so you won't uh, you won't see these nail holes either so let me go ahead and finish this up and we'll we'll do the tread okay measuring for the treads about the same way we're gonna lay it in here and extend our jig out adjust it on this side and then adjust it all the way out on this side Now all we have to do is take our jig down, lay it on the tread, scribe a line, adjust our miter saw, cut it out, it's going to fit great. Okay, so we laid our jig out on the tread and we're keeping up with, you know, which end of the jig is back and which end is front. Um, then we're just going to scribe a line. And this is dark wood and it's got poly on it, so it's going to be a little challenging to see that line, so I'm going to mark it real good. If 
guess you could take a utility knife and scribe it too. Might work. Okay, there's our line. All we have to do now is take it over to the miter saw, find our angle and cut it. Okay, so all we have to do now is find our line and adjust our miter saw. And that looks good. When I cut this, I found that if I cut and you know, chop and then come up and chop and then come up and chop, it goes through a little bit better and it doesn't blow out the, the sides of this finished board like it would if I just try to hog it all the way through. So that's how I'm gonna cut this. Okay, so we have our tread cut out. Let's see how it fits. I want you to look at that. Perfect. Tighter than Nick's hat band. So um, what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and put some uh, construction of heat adhesive on the bottom. Kind of nail the corners and uh, have that tread done. Now I'm going to show you how to build that jig. This is a pretty easy project to build and it doesn't cost very much and it doesn't require you know a whole lot of scientific precision either but it will make a nice little jig or a tool that we can use not only to cut out our stair treads but anytime that we're trying to measure between two points and we may have a little hinky involved. Uh, most of this is built with scrap that I had laying around. Uh, the only thing that I had to buy is a, a metal ruler. And I picked this, it's a three foot ruler. I picked it up at Lowe's for $2.68 or three bucks. It, it, it was really cheap. So we'll need this ruler. And uh, what you end up, may end up having to buy is some of this hardware. Now I took the hardware off of my my feather boards, I robbed it off of here, off of my router table feather boards. Now, you can buy these little twist knobs, but they're pretty expensive. They're three or four dollars each, and we need four of them. Uh, I don't know, maybe you have some nuts and bolts laying around, you may be able to accomplish uh, the same, same thing. But anyway, for me, I have about three bucks in this jig. So, let's, uh, let's talk about how, how this thing goes together. First thing let's do, let's take our ruler and let's get a jigsaw or put it on your bandsaw or something and cut two 12 inch pieces so that you end up with, you know, two of these 12 inch pieces. And uh, what we're going to do with that is come right in the middle and drill a quarter inch hole in that thing. So go ahead and drill a hole and, and then we'll have two of these that are made the same length and the hole is going to be right in the middle of them. So that'd be the first thing that you do. Okay, the next thing to do is just go find a piece of scrap. This is a piece of one by three, so it's about two and a half inches wide right here. And this one is 23 inches long. Uh, like I said, this isn't real scientific or precision, but what we're going to do with this is we're going to use this uh, as the carriage, I guess, for our you know, unit here so it can expand and collapse. To do that, I'm gonna hog this out. Uh, I'm gonna use a router table and a bit. Uh, you could use your dado blade on the table saw and do the same thing, uh, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Now, this piece here, I think this one is uh, this one is about an inch and three eighths wide. That's just kind of how it worked out. So obviously I need to cut a slot that is an inch and three eighths wide right here all the way through this piece. And um, this is a piece of half inch. Uh, just off the shelf if you, you want to go buy some or if you have, you know, you may have some laying around or you can cut some on your table saw. But this is just half inch. So this slot is gonna be a half inch deep, and what I say, an inch and three eighths wide, however yours works out. But 
But what that does is it lets this be flush, so when you lay it down, it'll be relatively flat. So, uh, also on this piece of half inch, we're going to cut a slot in it right here so that this thing can, can slide back and forth. And see, that's where our hardware goes through, and that's how we tighten it up. So, let me take this over, take a scrap piece over to the router table, and I'll show you kind of how I, I cut this out. Okay, so on this little extension leg, uh, this thing is, it's about 16 inches. And the slot is about seven inches. Okay, and the slot sets in from the end about an inch and three quarter. Okay, so with all that cut out, what it does is it lets us, you know, pretty pretty accurately go in this pocket that we cut out and it gives us you know kind of the surface where you know we can you know expand to measure something pretty wide or actually something pretty short and uh, it, it's it's flush right here so when we lay this down it'll be pretty flat generally speaking so that's kind of how how that goes together <laughs> Okay, what we need to do now is on the main body of this, we need to drill about a quarter inch hole, okay? And on mine, I set it in about three inches. And see, that's where your, your bolt's gonna come up through and all your hardware is gonna be. And the best way to do this, I think, is to go ahead and take your little extension leg and lay it in the pocket, okay? Get it laid in your, in your pocket there in that slot and come in with your drill. You know, you've, you've marked a space three inches in, so come in with your drill and go ahead and drill it. That way, you know you're, you're hitting that hole right in the center of this slot and there's no guesswork to it. Okay, now we need to take uh, this leg and drill that hole. That's a quarter inch hole. And uh, I went ahead and marked the center and what I did was I took our piece of ruler and just kind of laid it you know, kind of flush against that leg and drill that hole. Then you have to round this edge off a little bit with your jigsaw or your router table or something because when you're pushing this up kind of against where your stair tread is going to be and you have to rotate this a little bit, you don't want that sharp edge of this piece here to, to interfere with your ability to kind of gauge that angle. All we have to do now is just put our stuff together. So. Let's start with, with the leg and this little piece of ruler and our bolt. This is off of my feather board. It's a Craig feather board. So if you want to find a bolt just like this, go to Woodcraft and I think they sell these uh, bolts and these kits separate. So you can pick one of those up. Uh, I put a flat washer on mine. So I'm just gonna run the bolt up the bottom and go ahead and take this little wing nut here and tighten it up. Okay, so there we have that. Now we can go ahead and put this little unit here into the carriage. And fits in there really nice. Kind of a medium precision fit, which is plenty. Take our, our bolt with a little flat washer on it, run it up through the hole, 
and then go ahead and put our wing nut with another flat washer put our wing nut on and that's really all there is to it that's how it goes together so that's all there is to building a stair cutting jig you know you can buy these things i've seen them anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks or you can spend anywhere from three to 15 bucks depending on what you have on hand and build yourself one of these fine redneck engineered made at home do it yourself jigs this isn't as slick and polished as the ones you can buy but i promise i promise it does the same thing so this video was kind of quick and down and dirty i didn't go into all the laborious detail that i sometimes do but hopefully you can build one for yourself uh, there's really not much to it if, if you can't build one for yourself based on what i've already shown you then maybe you ought to buy one well, I hope the video helps and I hope you, you're able to get some use uh, from this information in one of your future projects. Remember, if you like the video, remember to give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, and leave me some comments. Thanks for watching.